Hi all and welcome to this video financial modeling blog tutorial. Today we're going to look at naming cells and ranges in Excel. As always if you haven't already done so please go to the blog post at www.videofinancialmodeling.com slash blog and read that prior to starting this video tutorial. That's going to give you a bit of background on naming cells and ranges in Excel. Okay. So let's get into it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name a cell inf, which contains 3%. Now, inf is a common uh, named cell for inflation. So we're going to put in here inflation. In column E, we're going to put in inf. I'm going to color that red. You don't have to. And then I'm going to put 3%. Okay, I'm going to change the formatting of that because video financial modeling standard is that inputs are in blue. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to name this cell inf. Okay, and if you've got the label on the left hand side of the value, then what you can do is go Control F3, Alt N, or click the new button and enter and then escape out and that should be named and you'll see that up in the top left hand corner that name of the excel sheet okay so the next one we're going to do is we're going to name a row okay so here it says put in an inflation index for years 1 to 10 so we're going to put in year and we're going to put over here in h we're going to go 0 I'm going to color that red because it's a unique formula and I'm going to go equals that plus one and I'm going to delete that last one and I've just copied across that formula so shift arrow across and then control R will copy across that formula now what we're going to do is we're going to put in an inflation index and we're going to label this in the same columns. So we're going to go inf index, right? And we're going to go control shift R. And that's a, a unique video financial modeling blog uh, or financial modeling shortcut. And we're going to go, so it's going to be one here. I'm going to change that to percentage and color that red and then I'm going to go and put in a formula for inflation so times one plus now we can go up to the inf now you'll notice it's named inf or we can type it and this is one of the key things about naming cells and ranges is that it's efficient so we can type it and without leaving the page we can type in inf or any other number of uh, named cells. So let's go enter and we're going to go and change that to a percentage and I'm going to copy it across. So all I've done there again is shift arrow across, control R to copy across and then we've got an inflation index. Now you'll notice that if I go shift and space bar here we haven't named the row yet. Now to name a row you need to be on the value that you want to name it. So you go to inf index and we go shift spacebar, control F3, alt N and enter and that should be named. So shift spacebar and we'll see that inf index is named in the top left hand corner. Now I'm going to show you a quick tip about naming ranges. Now naming ranges is uh, best modeling practice or video financial modeling believe that naming ranges is best practice however you do have to take some precautionary measures. Now for example a lot of people what we advocate doing is if you're going to do a year or a, a date convention at, in your assumptions page, what you do is you name that. So let's go name that. So shift space bar on the year, control F3, alt N, enter. 
what a lot of people will do, they'll start up a new sheet, they'll start to type year, and they'll put zero in this column, equals that plus one, and then they'll copy across, they'll have their 10 years, and then they'll go and type in inf index, and they'll wonder why it's 1.09 or 1097 percent in year zero and that's because they haven't aligned the columns correctly okay the zero should all be all the way back at column h okay so we should have a one back here right and we should have a zero here to get around that you should always use your aim convention so now if i copy this across so it would just go all the way right and you can see that when we delete all these zeros now we've got the exact same inflation index as on the original page and those inflation index numbers line up with the correct column okay so just a tip there you have to make sure that your columns align if you're going to use named ranges if if you're not going to make sure then it's pointless doing it you're going to make a mistake okay we hope you've enjoyed this video financial modeling blog tutorial if you haven't already done so, sign up to our YouTube channel or our newsletter. Thanks.